Hello, my name is Chris, and I am a hoarder. Hi, Chris. Hey everybody, Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer here. Time for another pickups video. If you thought I got a lot of stuff in the last pickups video that I did, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh boy. Once again, things just kind of fell into place in, in weird areas. Opportunities arose where I could get some great deals. I got a great bonus at the end of the year from my employer. I went on a trip to LA, found some cool stuff out there, found some sales going on online. It was a crazy few months. I managed to get a ton of stuff for a lot of different systems. So let's just get into it. So I've got four different groups of pickups here. The first is all of the stuff I've been picking up online. Uh, locally at stores, on Facebook groups. The second is everything I got on Black Friday, which included a great deal I found when a very well-respected publisher had a clearance sale on their website. The third are my pickups from LA when I went to visit my brother over the holidays. And fourth, repros. Lots and lots of repros. Let's do it. So the first group is, you know, my generic pickups. Uh, let's go from oldest to newest, shall we? Starting off with Mousetrap for the Atari 2600, which is an upgrade from the cart-only version that I had originally. It's a Pac-Man knockoff. And only one game for the NES this time. Found it at a local store, just kind of sitting in a case all by itself, and I said, I kind of want to take you home, give you a place to put up your feet. Wizardry, proving grounds of the Mad Overlord. And a new controller, the Advantage. But you might remember from that last pickup video when I showed off the twin Famicom that I picked up from Japan, which was the Nintendo Famicom and Famicom Disk System combo. I got two games with that when I bought it. It was uh, Mario Brothers 2, the Japanese version, and Othello, but they were loose. I don't do loose. Everything's gotta be CIB. I upgraded just the one, Super Mario Brothers 2. I really love the packaging that these Famicom Disk System games come in. You have this really cool hard plastic case that really protects it if you drop it and stuff like that. Uh, but you also get a manual, you get like a, almost like a cassette tape holder for the disc. And it comes in this paper sleeve. Usually has another advertisement for what game you're playing. And the disc itself, which is in a lot better shape than the one that I got by itself with the system. I did sell off the Othello though, because it's Othello. <laughs> but I didn't stop there with just the Mario Brothers 2. I kept going went deep into the library of the Famicom Disk System. Falcyon, which is a very awesome shmup by Konami. Dead Zone, which is kind of like a Shadowgate, Deja Vu style text adventure uh, with a couple of puzzles thrown in here and there by Sunsoft. It's pretty cool, although I have absolutely no clue what is going on in this game because it is all in Japanese. Yay me. Esper Dream by Konami, which is kind of an RPG. Another one that is all in Japanese, which makes it just so much easier for me to play. Mm-hmm. Famicom Grand Prix F1 Race and Famicom Grand Prix 2 3D Hot Rally. F1 Race is kind of like the precursor to the F1 Race that came out for the Game Boy. And this is the sequel, obviously. But the only reason I knew about this one was because Mark from Classic Game Room, which I'm happily being a Patreon of, reviewed this in one of his videos, which is also pretty close to when he reviewed the Twin Famicom, which maybe you want to get that system. Uh, and this game looked fantastic, and it is. It is a super fun racing game. F1 race is good too, but the second one just beats it out in every way possible. And finally, the PS de Resistance. The game of all games when it comes to the Twin Famicom, in my eyes, Doki Doki Panic. This is the game that Super Mario Bros. 2 is a hack of. The USA version of Mario Bros. 2, that is. Everything you know and love and some people hate from what was Mario Bros. 2 in the US is in here. Although now it is just with characters that I have no idea who they are. I'm assuming it's from an anime or something, but whatever. It's still, it is a lot of fun. And it's just weird hearing the same music and sound effects used in this game as they were used in Mario Bros. 2. It's just, it's really weird and kind of surreal, but... I love it, it's great. So this is now the crown jewel of my Famicom Disk System collection. Moving on to the Game Boy. Not too many games for the Game Boy. Games for the system are a little expensive, uh, but I did manage to eke out a couple of uh, good deals. Gotta complete that Rare collection, you know, Rareware. Super RC Pro-Am. Oh, and look, F1 Race for the Game Boy with the four player adapter. <laughs> Trying to find a box protector for this is a bitch. 
And then the greatest game ever made for the Game Boy. Super Mario Land. Do you even remember that Super Mario Land had shmup levels in it? Because I didn't. Sega Genesis. Bob. Just Bob. Got me a copy of X-Men 2 Clone Wars. I have the original X-Men game for the Genesis, and it is not that good. However, this game fixes everything. It even bypasses the start screen. The moment you boot up your Genesis with this cartridge in it, it goes right into the game. It just starts up with you fighting somebody, and it picks you a random X-Men to play as each time, which is amazing. Great game. I can finally add another great renovation game to my Genesis collection. Game Ground. Got both of these from my buddy Felix, who runs the Retro Game Nerdatorium on Facebook. Thanks, bruh. And then one of the games I've been trying to get for the Sega Genesis ever since I got back into collecting because I was a fool and sold this, but it finally came into my possession through a Facebook deal. Uh, the guy was selling it for a pretty decent price, and I said, you know what, I've been wanting it so long, it's time that I actually bought it. Unfortunately, it is in the reprint edition. Castlevania Bloodlines. Amazing Castlevania game that's very comparable to Super Castlevania 4. A lot of fun. Great music for, you know, the Genesis, which, you know, does not have a great sound chip, but... I love the music here. Lots of really cool effects. Uh, you get two different characters to play as. I'm just so stoked to have this back in my collection. I've been playing this a lot. It is super, super fun and also really, really hard. Turbo Graphics 16. So when I first picked up my Turbo Duo, I posted on a bunch of the groups that centered around the Turbo Graphics uh, community, asking, you know, hey, what games should I be looking for since you know I just got a system again? Um, I only had the really popular games back when I had the Turbo Graphics back in the early 2000s, you know, like the Bonks and the Legendary Axe games, and, you know, I didn't really go out of my way to collect anything specific, I was just going for the ones I knew that were good, um, but were there any other games I should be looking for, and somebody suggested these two games for me, because they said that even though they are sports games, they had, like, RPG elements mixed into it, and I said, what? That sounds kind of strange and also kind of amazing. World Court Tennis. The other one is Final Lap Twin. Cosmic Fantasy 2, which is a Fantasy Star-esque RPG that has like sci-fi elements mixed into it. I bought a PC Engine game. It's an RPG called Burai. It's in Japanese. What's happening in it? I don't know. Sega CD is a console that I've been trying to collect for, but the games I want are usually really expensive. Can't afford them. I really found a lot of people slipping on eBay. Like a lot. Dune, which is kind of like a strategy adventure game with a lot of voice acting, some of it not so hot. But it's really cool. Some of the animation I'm not too fond of, like your little uh, birdie ship thing that you fly around and looks like shit. Like, oh, that's beautiful. It's really complicated and kind of hard, but I like it. Battle Core, which is kind of like a tank slash mech game where it's in the first person. And it's by Core. The graphics are really kind of chunky and bulky looking. And sometimes it's really hard to see what you're running into and shooting at because it's just everything is kind of like the same color. And I mean, it is kind of cool. I like it. I mean, it's it's okay, but god damn, sometimes it is just a frustrating game to play. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Eye of the Beholder. I do own this game for the Super Nintendo. I wanted this version of the game also because Yuzo Koshiro composed the music for it. Who was Yuzo Koshiro? He composed the music for Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage 2, Act Razor, Revenge of Shinobi. Tons of games you've probably played and said while you're playing them. I love the music in this game. But it's a really cool dungeon crawl game based on an old PC game. That's a lot of fun. This is a lot better than the Super Nintendo version, as far as I'm concerned. Batman Returns, which is part port of the Genesis game with better music, and part completely new game with driving levels, which are really fun and feature great effects and awesome music by Spencer Nielsen. The platforming stuff that was the Genesis game is horrendously bad. Luckily, you're given the option to just completely skip it and go straight to the driving portions, which is awesome. The Terminator, which is not a port of the Genesis game, it is a completely new game, which is way better in every way from that version, which I love, don't get me wrong, I love it, but this one is a lot better. Surgical Strike, which is a FMV game, which everybody hates, except this guy. The only reason I picked this up was because Mark from Classic Gamer was talking about this one again, and he reviewed it, and it looked like so much fun. Just like a cheesy B-movie starring the lead from Stargate Atlantis. Dude, I did not come down here to be in your little web-based bullshit. I am a dork. Cliffhanger. <laughs> 
I hear a lot of people saying this game is garbage. I've seen footage of it, and yeah, it does look like garbage. But I found this for a very great price. But I had to have it because of my love of the Super Nintendo version of this game. This game is completely different in every way. Mm, it's... The Lawnmower Man. It is very confusing, and it is hard to control, and it is... Just, what is happening in this game? This game usually goes for about 80 some dollars. I caught some guy slipping, he's selling it for about 30. And when I logged on and I saw that, I was like, no, don't pass this up. Buy it now, is your friend. The Adventures of Batman and Robin. Based on the cartoon series, this one is the driving stages from Batman Returns. And that's all the game is, is just driving levels. There was all new animation done in the style of the cartoon made specifically for this game, which is awesome. It is super freaking hard, but it is a lot of fun. It is really cool. I really like this game. I'm glad that I picked it up when I did. I didn't think I was ever going to be able to get this game because it is, you know, of a higher price point. And, yeah, people, keep up on your eBay game. That's all I gotta say. Let's go for some Super Nintendo, shall we? The old-ass retro gamer and licensed games go together like peas and carrots. And that's all I have to say about that. I find them fun, even though most of them are poop. I don't know if you remember, but in the first collaboration video that I did with Nintendo, he brought up, he really likes the first game in this series. Uh, I'm not a fan of it, even though I own it. I was more of a fan of the second one, which is Jurassic Park Part 2 The Chaos Continues. Instead of being a top-down adventure style game like the first Jurassic Park for the SNES, this one is a side-scrolling action game that's kind of like playing Contra. The controls are kind of sluggish, your character runs really slow, sometimes it's really hard to see where you need to go because sometimes you have to go into the background to another part of the level. There'll be like an arrow on the ground to say you need to pass through this bush in order to go to another section of the level. Sometimes the foreground stuff obscures the arrows, which is really stupid. But the game is fun. There's a whole bunch of different levels you can choose from. You're not forced to go through the levels in a specific order. Everything is your choice. I just gotta say, man, the music in this game is fantastic. The level Protect the Gallimimus has some of the coolest music I've ever heard in a Super Nintendo game. It is super moody. And it just, it gets you amped up to play. You want to just kick the living shit out of the poachers, man. It's awesome. I highly recommend this game. I mean, it doesn't have the greatest reviews. It's not looked upon very fondly, but I think this is a complete diamond in the rough. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And yet another licensed game, but this time off of an anime. Ranma 1 Half Hard Battle. I used to love the Ranma 1 Half cartoon back when it first started coming out in the US in the early to mid 90s. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. It's kind of like a ripoff of Street Fighter. I love the characters from the anime. They're all represented here perfectly. Although the animation and the speed of the game is extremely slow, it is a lot of fun. And then uh, I got me a couple of RPGs. I realized that I did not have a whole lot for my Super Nintendo and it was time to remedy that. And I did. Illusion of Gaia! And one of my favorite RPGs of all time. This was in my runners-up of my top 10 games of all time list. This is the first RPG that I really, really got into. Uh, before, I'd played like Dragon Warrior and the original Final Fantasy, and I thought they were okay. Uh, I never thought they were super awesome. And then I played this game, and now all of a sudden RPGs were like my thing. Final Fantasy 2, which is actually Final Fantasy 4 in Japan. Why they did this number goof-up thing, I don't know. Whatever. I've been trying to get this game for the longest time, and because I got that nice little bonus from work, I was like, you know what? Yeah, this game is kind of expensive. It might be just time to spring for it because it's not getting any cheaper, and I haven't been able to find it anywhere else. So I said, do it. Just do it now before it gets any more expensive, and I did, and I love it so much. And I've been trying to get this game also for the longest time, just never seemed to be able to find it, and I found it at a local store... It was a little on the expensive side, but it was manageable. I had a lot of credit at the store. I'd done a lot of trade-ins, so I said, you know what? Instead of getting a bunch of little things, I might just get one big thing. Super Double Dragon. A lot of people hate this game. I love it. The moment I booted this thing up, I just played it all night long. Great beat-em-up. I don't know if this is considered a sequel or a remake of the original Double Dragon, but... It's a ton of fun. I love it. And although I don't go for loose cartridges... Um, I went to a half price books. I usually go straight for the video game section just to see what I can find. And they usually have a big glass case where they keep the more expensive stuff. And the loose games because they don't want people pocketing them. So, look in the case and there was some, there was some cool stuff in there. They had Super Mario RPG. Uh, they had Super Mario World, which I still don't own, which is strange in itself. And then I see this game in this stack of loose Super Nintendo games. And I was like, I 
could swear that that game goes for a lot of money on eBay. And I also know the game is very uncommon. I've never run into this game before in my entire time collecting, even back in the day. This is the first time I've seen this game in person. How about that? So when I saw it sitting there for 10 bucks, I was like, might want to pick it up just to have it. Maybe you can flip it. Time Tracks. This is a TV show from like the early 90s. I remember I watched maybe one episode of it at a friend's house who was a big fan of the show. And I was like, what the hell is this? It was kind of kind of dumb and hokey. In order to decide if I wanted to get rid of it or not, I was like, you know what? How about you play it first and find out if you're enjoyed enough to want to keep it? So I popped it in. Lo and behold, it's actually kind of fun. It's a side-scrolling action game. It has really cool effects, really cool music. And the controls are really tight. I mean, it's nothing special, but... It's really fun. I was selling this on Facebook in a couple of groups. I was trying to get rid of it. But I was like, you know what? I'll take those uh, those for sale posts down and I'll just keep it for myself. And I found a copy that is going for about $300 on eBay that is complete. And I was like, oh, no. So I got a repro box coming just so I can add this to my collection on the shelf and not have it be this lonely cartridge just sitting on the shelf going. How about some Game Boy Color? These are going to be the weirdest Game Boy Color pickups you've ever seen. This entire stack is licensed stuff. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, they made a Buffy the Vampire Slayer game for the Game Boy Color. And there's also one for the Game Boy Advance, which I really need to find. Because I'm a big Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. This is a side-scrolling beat-em-up. I'm glad that I have it on my collection. It's not the greatest thing ever, but I, I, I'm happy that I have it. Yoda Stories. I know John Riggs told me not to get it. He told me it was poop in the collaboration video that we did, but when he told me it was poop, I already had it on order. It was too late. I already, I already sealed the deal, but yeah, it's not good. Star Wars Episode One Racer, which has the rumble feature. It's all right. And then the one you never hear about. I didn't even know that this game existed until I did a search on eBay to see what uh, Star Wars games were available for the Game Boy systems. And I saw this and I was like, what? When did that happen? So right then and there I said, I need it. Episode 1, Obi-Wan's Adventures. It's like this isometric action game where you play as Obi-Wan through the Episode 1 uh, storyline. It's kind of like the new droid army for the Game Boy Advance, but this one's actually done well. So this is like the diamond in the rough Star Wars game out there that no one ever talks about. And then let's get into the Game Boy Advance while we're at it, shall we? Max Payne. This is done as an isometric action game. Which is a lot of fun. It's kind of like Tron 2.0 that came out for the Game Boy Advance. It's awesome. Even though it's not like you know the third person, just like the PC game or the other versions of the game. But they managed to pull it off. It even has all the same cutscenes. Uh, there's no voiceovers, but you know it, it pulls off the ambiance. It pulls off the bullet time stuff. It is awesome. I really recommend it. Attack of the Clones. This game is shit. Power! But not Revenge of the Sith. Ubisoft, which is what I said in the good Star Wars games video, you know, the rad, that Ubisoft was the one company that seemed to be able to get Star Wars right on the handheld systems, proves it that, you know, Star Wars trilogy, you know, Apprentice of the Force was amazing, and then they made Episode 3 into an awesome game. You can play as either Anakin or Obi-Wan through their own storyline, and it is super fun. It is a beat-em-up, which is amazing. Yes! And then this game is super amazing. This is another diamond in the rough for the Game Boy Advance. It is a first-person shooter that is just like playing Doom or Wolfenstein. Dark Arena. This is the one to get. So another console that I'm a very big fan of that not a lot of people are is the 3DO. And I'm probably going to do a video about the 3DO alone in the future once I get a few more games to add to my collection. That way I'll actually have a lot to talk about. I've actually been considering getting a complete 3DO collection now. I don't think I will be able to because there's a lot of games out there that are just rare as hell and are super expensive. But whatever. I have a lot now and I've managed to pick up quite a few new ones. Shadow War of Succession, which is a Mortal Kombat clone. Really big. Bad Mortal Kombat clone. Oh my god, is this game awful. But I had to have it because I love Mortal Kombat clones. Samurai Showdown, which is a port of the Neo Geo game. Probably the best port aside from what you would be able to get on the Neo Geo. It's amazing. Return of Fire, Maps of Death, which is an upgrade. I had just the disc. Now I have the complete version, 
which is basically an add-on to Return Fire. Out of This World, which is another upgrade. I had just the disc, now I have the complete version. This is the best version of Out of This World you're going to play, aside from probably the computer versions. Quarantine, which is this really strange driving game where you're inside the driver's seat of a car, you've got guns all over your vehicle, you're taking out like mutants and pedestrians and all this kind of crazy shit. And then every once in a while you can even like break your, your windshield and shoot out the window with a machine gun, you know, by hand. Lots of full motion video. It's kind of kooky. It's really crazy. Another game that I don't hear people talking a whole lot about. So this is like a diamond in the rough for the 3DO. It's awesome. Blade Force, which I did have back in the day, but I ended up selling it. A lot of fun. The graphics are kind of... It's extremely blocky and kind of bulky looking, but... It's awesome. Starblade, which is an on-rails shooter, which is a lot of fun. Twisted the Game Show, another upgrade for me. Flashback the Quest for Identity, which is also the best version of this game you will ever play. Tripped, which is a Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine style puzzle game. A lot of fun, awesome music. Another Star Wars game, Rebel Assault. There's a version of this available for the Sega CD, but this is the one you want to get. The graphics are clean and crisp and, yeah, the full motion video looks like poop, but whatever, I mean, it is a very cool on-rails shooter. Great fun. The Incredible Machine, which is a puzzle game where it's kind of like you create Rube Goldberg type inventions. It's really challenging, but, you know, it makes your brain think in other ways that you normally wouldn't. Jurassic Park Interactive, which is quite possibly the worst Jurassic Park game ever ever made because this has absolutely nothing to do with the movie. It is a bunch of ridiculous mini games. I mean, there's one that's kind of like playing Space Invaders. There's one that's kind of like playing Asteroids. It's just, what is this thing? I can understand wanting to license Jurassic Park, but the makers of this game could have at least tried to make it connect to the movie in some way. I mean, the actors they hired to play the characters of the movie look so disinterested in being in this game. The girl that plays Ellie is like, in all the pictures, it is no, no, no. Do not want. Kind of like a mercenary. Um, I had this game back in the day, and it is quite possibly one of the worst games I've ever played. It is like a first-person shooter that just is broken in every way possible. I got it for a couple of dollars, and I was like, you know what? I even though the game sucks, I did still have like a nostalgic attachment to it because when I first bought my 3DO, the first game I bought was Roy of the Warrior. This is the second game that I bought. Mm-hmm. But then the best of the bunch is the greatest port of this fighting game ever. Ever. There have been other ports of it and none of them have been any good until like the current gen systems. Like the PS3 had a version of it that was kind of good. But this was at the time the arcade perfect version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I know a lot of people, like Johnny Millennium from uh, Happy Console Gamer, was complaining about this game, how when he got the game, he only had like a three-button control and he didn't know how you were supposed to play this game, which required six buttons. Well, you know, there is a six-button controller available for the 3DO, and I have two of them. So I was able to play it just fine, and I enjoyed the shit out of it. Best version of this game of all time. And the Nintendo 64 is still my least favorite console of all time, which is why I just bought Battle for Naboo, which is a awesome, awesome Star Wars game made by the people who made Rogue Squadron, you know, Factor 5. Instead of being about aerial battles, this is about ground battles and ground vehicles. Doesn't sound like it'll be really cool. It actually is. Lots and lots of fun. So I only picked up a couple of Sega Saturn games. These things are still super expensive. One that I bought was expensive, but I had credit and I used it for that. The other was not so much. Uh, both are licensed. Big surprise! Street Fighter the movie the game, which is another Mortal Kombat clone. But the weird thing is that this is a game based off of a movie based off of a game. It's like Inception, man. It's like inside its insideness. And it looks goofy and awkward, and it's terrible, but it's still Street Fighter, so had to have it. What other game do you get to play as Van Damme? Not many. Or any. Except this one. And the other one is... Die Hard Arcade, which I do believe is part of the Dynamite Cop series. They just rebranded it Die Hard Arcade to give it some name recognition. It's a 3D beat em up. There's some quick time events. It's a lot of fun. It's just the graphics are not great. I mean, it, it does feel like an, an old arcade game. It has nothing to do with Die Hard at all. The original PlayStation. Picked up quite a few new games. I'm not going to go into detail much, uh, but 
Metal of Honor, Gex 3, Deep Cover Gecko, N2O, Nitrous Oxide, which will make your eyeballs bleed from all the pretty, pretty colors, Dead in the Water, which is like Twisted Metal on the Ocean, Beyond the Beyond, which is kind of like a generic RPG, Tenchu, Stealth Assassins, Dino Crisis 2, not as good as the first, Typhu, Wrath of the Tiger, Civilization 2, The X-Files, which is an awesome FMV game where it's kind of like point and clicky also, but it features the entire cast of the TV show reprising their roles through all these full motion video cutscenes, which is amazing. It's awesome. The guy that I bought a bunch of games off of gave me this game for free just because it was loose. Uh, but I wasn't complaining because it's Final Fantasy Tactics. <laughs> Bits. Battalion Wars, Lost Kingdoms, Mega Man Network Transmission, Pikmin which is a game I never owned for my GameCube back in the day. Never! I always heard people talking about it and tell me how it was kind of like this really cool strategy type game. Never got around to playing it, but now that I own it, I am so sad that I never did buy it back in the day because it is a lot of fun. And Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. 